Hello again, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to talk about how to size and design an off-grid solar system. We're also going to go over the components that are needed for the system. I've helped hundreds of people design their off-grid solar system. Let's get started. We're going to break it down into four categories. First is the daily energy needs. Second is the calculation of the battery bank size. Third, we'll cover how many solar panels are needed to charge a system. And lastly, choosing the right charge controller for the solar system. First, we must calculate the daily energy needs. Let's say you wanna charge some appliances, like say a fridge, a couple of lights, a TV, and an internet router while at your cabin. We need to calculate the energy needs to run these items. Daily energy needs. First, we need to find out power consumption of each device and appliance and multiply them on how many times they are turned on or used and then we will get a watt hour amount. So here we have a chart showing the appliance and devices, the amount of times they are used, the watts they consume, and the hours or duration they are used and the watt hours a day. So here in the chart, you'll see we have some lights, quantity of times, six, how many watts each of them used, eight, and the duration or the time it's used is about for, for about three hours a day, totaling 144 watt hours. The fridge shows one fridge. The watts it used is 400, 2.1 hours a day at 800, and so forth with the TV, the inverter, and the internet router. A lot of people doesn't, don't calculate the inverter, but it, you need to put that in there because that uses energy to run. So we have a total of 1,864 watt hours. You will then add the total watts of all the devices and appliances together. This will give you a daily energy consumption of 1,864 watt hours as shown in the chart. Next, we need to calculate how big of a battery bank size you will need in order to power everything. If you use lithium iron phosphate or LFP chemistry, you can use 100% capacity of the battery versus lead acid battery, which is about 50%. Capacity meaning you can use it down to 50%. The efficiency of lithium batteries typically is about 95%, while lead acid batteries is about 80 to 75%. In order to have some cushion, you should design your system to have enough reserves for three days of autonomy, meaning if it's raining outside or really cloudy for three days, you'll have enough battery storage to power your devices and appliances. Calculating battery bank size. So in the chart that I'm going to show you, it's going to talk about the depths of discharge for both lead, acid, and lithium batteries. We're going to show the battery efficiency, the invert efficiency, and the days of autonomy. So in the chart, you can see depth of discharge is one for lithium, typically, and for lead acid, it's typically two because of the 50% of this depth of discharge. Battery efficiency is about 1.05. So the, how we got that formula was the, the variable, I should say, is dividing um, 100 by 0.95, because we need to find 95%. And how we got the inverter efficiency is dividing 100 by 0 0.90. And that gives you the 1.1 because we need a variable to be able to do this formula. So the formula goes as follows. The formula to figure out the battery size is 1,864 watt hours times one times 1 1.05 times 1.11 times three equals 6,517 watt hours. This will be the capacity or size of the battery bank we now need to select a battery voltage. The rule of thumb is if you require a thousand watts or less, 
to use a 12 volt battery system. If you require 2000 watts, use a 24 volt system. If you require more than 2000 watts, use a 48 volt system. We will be using a 48 volt battery system since our daily watt hours usage is about 1900 watt hours. Using a 48 volt system will reduce your current and it also will reduce your wire size and fuse sizes, thus saving you some money. We then calculate how many amp hours are needed. So we will take 6,517 watt hours of daily consumption divided by 51 volts equals 135 amp hour. So we can use a 150 amp hour 48 volt battery. Solar panels needed. Next, we need to determine how many solar panels are needed. We will need to look up how many sun hours based on, say, your location. Let's pick Florida, for instance. Let's say, and let's use the month of December, since it is the shortest sun hour period of the year. To clear up some confusion, one sun hour equals 1,000 watts per square meter and not one daylight hour. So we would need to re recharge the battery in one day. So based on the chart shown here, the sun hour for Florida in the month of December is about 4.68 hours of sun. So let's calculate 6,517 watt hours divided by 4.68 sun hours equals 1,393 watts of solar power. So rounded up, you, you'll need about 1,400 watts of solar power to charge your batteries. You can purchase four 370 watt solar panels, which will give you 1,480 watts of solar power. Selecting charge controller. To figure out the charge controller, we have to divide the total power of the solar panels by the charging voltage of our 48 volt battery. So solar panels at 375 watts each multiplied by four gives us about 1,480 watts. Then we will divide that by 55 volts. 48 volts is typically the nominal name but most of them will be charged to about 55 volts. So we times that by 55 volts equals about 27 amps. A 48 volt energy system with about 145 VOC or volts open circuit with a 50 amp charge controller is suitable for this application. In this diagram, you will see four solar panels each with a spec of about 39 VOC or open volt circuit, 11.26 of current, wired in series and parallel. So two panels are wired together, that's about 78 VOC, and then it's paralleled, which increases the amp, so we'll be at about 22.52. So you can see that we're below the 50 amp uh, charging current that that charger will allow and the wiring it back to that 32 amp breaker is more than sufficient to handle if there was such a, a shortage or a surge then that 32 amp 32 amp breaker will trip which is then wired back to the inverter charge controller and it connects to a 100 amp fuse back to the battery to the 48 volt uh, battery so you can see there's a fuse or a breaker in between each of the devices for safety reasons the inverter AC output is then wired into the AC electrical panel to power the cabin. And that's what it takes to size an off-grid solar system. Pretty straightforward. So, in conclusion, let's recap the four categories for designing an off-grid solar system. First, finding your daily energy needs. Second, calculating battery bank size. Third, how many solar panels are needed? And fourth, selecting your charge controller. If you have found value in this information, 
and it can help you towards designing your system, please smash that like button. Also, please share and subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching, and until the next video, take care. Thank <music> you.